Hey guys, welcome to the video. This video, uh, we are going to be taking some measurements off of the Ecotec with the adapter. I'm going to show you the Kennedy Engineering adapter plate and hopefully, if everything lines up properly, we're going to install it on the Volkswagen. Alright, so here's the kit. I purchased the Kennedy Kennedy Engineering kit. I had a couple of conversations with them, went over what my intentions were, what motor I was putting in there with what transaxle, and uh, this is the kit that they had. So the kit was $440, and then I paid an additional $25 to get the flywheel lightened. This is the piece of aluminum that it comes with. This is actually the piece that's going to um, convert from the Ecotec bolt pattern to the Volkswagen bolt pattern. These are the nut, nuts and bolts that the kit came with. This is a little uh, aluminum blank off that it comes with to block off where the starter used to go because on the Ecotec the starter sticks out towards the engine and you don't use that. For this uh, adapter you use the original Volkswagen starter so this just plugs up the hole. This is the flywheel. I don't know exactly where they lightened it, but anyways, this is the flywheel. This should have all the proper offsets to match our starter ring gear and the pilot bearing with the proper depth that it needs to be. However, we're going to check that before we install. And this, check this out. These are the instructions that it came with. It actually comes in like a, a hard cardboard binder, which is amazing. I've never seen instructions that nice. You open it up, they've got some, uh, they've got some I'm going to call it basic instructions for the uh, installation. They've got some uh, facts and figures for gear ratios and whatnot for different transaxles. And then they actually have all, all sorts of advice on what types of radiators to run, where to put them, um, all sorts of kind of, let's call it tips and tricks for installations like this. And then it comes with a, a cool sticker. So I gotta, I gotta tell you, when you open up your kit and it has uh, such nice instructions that really makes you feel confident in the product that you purchased. Now one thing that I've already done is when I got the kit, I dry fit the plate on here and I read the instructions and I went through and I, I didn't torque down, but I put all the bolts in just to figure out because there's, there's different bolt lengths here and there's a couple of different bolt sizes. So I wanted to go through the kit and make sure that I understood where everything went before I was actually hanging the engine up in the air trying to figure it out. So I've already done that. If you're doing this before you get to the point where you're going to be installing it, do just that. Dry fit everything, get somewhat acclimated to the kit, and read your instructions. Now here at the transaxle, there's a couple of things that I need to know before I just go bolting the Ecotec on here. I need to know for my uh, for my input shaft to the transaxle here, I want to make sure that the depth to the flywheel on the adapter is going to be the proper depth of where the pilot bearing needs to ride here. I want to make sure that it's not going to go in too far and bind with that. So what I'm going to do for starters, I'm going to um, hang the uh, adapter plate on here. Now there's a, uh, on the Ecotec, there's a dowel right here and there's a dowel right there. Make sure that those are in your motor. And then on this adapter plate, it's got recesses machined in it for those dowels. So for just temporary purposes, you don't have to bolt it on. You can just kind of put it in place and then Put it on there with a rubber or a rawhide mallet. Don't do that with a steel mallet or hammer because you will dent the aluminum. Now with that in place, I'm going to take my flywheel. I could fast forward this or I could just sing. Not making anything tight. I'm just snugging it on here so that everything's at the proper depth. Now here's what we want to do. I've got my notes right here. I've actually already taken these dimensions, but I'm going to go over with you how I did it. This is my uh, adapter plate. This is the uh, pilot bearing. This is the outer edge of the flywheel. 
I've measured from the outer edge of the flywheel to the adapter plate. This is a straight edge here. And then I've measured from the straight edge to the outside portion of the pilot bearing. Now the way I did that, I put a straight edge on here. And with the straight edge looking down, I measured off of the adapter plate. And then I measured the outside edge of the pilot bearing. So like I showed you, this is the straight edge. That's my one and seven sixteenths from the straight edge to the adapter plate. This is my one and a sixteenth from the straight edge to the pilot bearing. Then I subtract the difference between those. One and seven sixteenths minus one and one sixteenths is three eighths of an inch. That means that this pilot bearing protrudes from the adapter plate three eighths of an inch. Then I also took a measurement of how far in the pilot bearing goes. Not only just the pilot bearing, but how, how much room I have before I actually bottom out in the Ecotech crankshaft, which is one and three quarters of an inch. So what we have then is, I've got one and three quarters of an inch that my input shaft can go in, and then from the adapter plate, which is the outside edge of the transaxle, my pilot bearing protrudes three-eighths of an inch. So let's take that over to the transaxle and see what that looks like. Now if we come over here to the transaxle, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this. We put a straight edge across the mating surface of the transaxle. Now what this represents is the outside edge of the adapter plate that we were just measuring. So anything that we measure off of this straight edge going this way is measuring the same distances that we were just measuring on the adapter plate. So if you remember, we had the pilot bearing sticks 3 eighths of an inches out. So what I've done here is I've got this sticking 3 eighths of an inches, or according to this rule, 12 30 seconds, out from the straight edge. That is going to represent where the pilot bearing starts on the adapter flywheel. You can see that it's actually really good. That gives me about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch before this input shaft will bottom out in the pilot bearing. So this represents where the pilot bearing starts. Then I had an inch and three quarters that it had to go before it hit the bottom of the uh, crankshaft and I can, I can tell that I've got plenty of room there. This is good to go. It looks like I should be able to bolt these on. I'll have plenty of room on the back side before it even comes close to bottoming out on the crankshaft. And I'll have about 3 16 of an inch on the, on the leading edge here before this input shaft actually bottoms out in the pilot bearing. So that is awesome. Now the next thing I have to worry about is from the top of the adapter plate, how much room do I have going up this way before I run into that horizontal bar on my chassis? So it looks like here, I'm really not going to interfere with the top of this valve cover till about nine inches. I do have this oil fill cap, which goes up to about 10 inches. All right, so we're back at the transaxle. Here's our adapter plate. And that, let me line up the bolts here. That is how that's going to go. So if I measure, let me get my straight edge straight here. All right, so if I go, so I have nine inches there. I think that will clear. If I go up to 10, I'm right there at 10. I'm actually a little bit under 10. So. I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen with that oil fill plug. There's a possibility I might have to relocate that. I guess our next step here is I'm going to go through the instructions and I'm going to actually bolt this onto the Ecotech, torque it down, Loctite it, and then do the same thing with the flywheel. Okay, so I've, uh, I've installed the four studs in here. I did install them with blue Loctite, like the instructions described. Now what they tell you to do in the instructions, they tell you to put these studs in, 
Then they tell you to come over and make sure that it fits on your transaxle before you bolt this onto the Ecotec. I think their intention is, they even say in the instructions, once you have these bolted in here, if you need to tap these over a little bit with a, uh, a mallet, probably just in case there's some imperfections in these studs, they say go ahead and do that now because it's important that this goes on here without any issues. Now, these three are the same length. This one is longer. Obviously, that's the one that you're going to put through and it's going to also help hold in your starter. So mine are good. I, uh, I put them in there, Loctited them. I just snugged them down a little bit with pliers. I'm not worried about actually really whaling them in there. And uh, I should be good to go. Alright, so I think I'm ready to go. I've got everything torqued, installed, ready to go. Um, I took off the oil filler and I put some tape over there just because I don't want to be fighting it while I'm installing it. Either it's going to fit or it isn't, but I don't want it to get in my way. So that's been eliminated and taped. I also put tape over my intake so that while I'm doing this, um, no debris falls off and falls in there. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to back the bug up a little bit so it's real close to here and then I'm going to put a jack in the front and I'm going to jack it way up because if I jack the front end up as high as my scissor jacks will go, that pretty much puts the transaxle level because I want to have the transaxle level so that I can jack the engine up and basically just push them in. If it's at an angle, it's extremely difficult to get them in there so that's what I'm going to do now and then we'll see if we can get it in. Alright, this is as good as I can get it. Um, I think at this point I'm just gonna crank it up. I got the front of the Jeep jacked up, I got chocks on the back wheels, and at this point just see what see what's gonna happen.
right, and there you go. Yesterday I had an air-cooled motor on the back of my bug. Today I've got an Ecotec hanging on the back of my bug. Now as far as, you know, it went on there pretty easy, but it did identify some pretty serious problems. Let's go over those right now. If you look at the motor, I mean, the, nothing changed with the transaxle angle, but for some reason, with the air-cooled motor, the, the angle that I ran it up is more, looks more severe with this motor than it did with the air-cooled. Now, the problem with that, it doesn't really bother me that it's angled up, but what does bother me is I have read some forum posts where people talk about how the uh, oil drain ports are in the front of the Ecotec head. What that means is if I was going down the road or even worse going downhill, all the oil would have to stack up into that head before it would make it to the back where it could run down. That I'll have to do some research on and see what I come up with. A Couple other things that I can now see is uh, this area here, this is the portion of the roll bar. It's real close to this coil. That's not a problem. What I don't know yet is if this can be removed while it's in the uh, in the bug. If it can't be, that would be upsetting. This is the camshaft uh, position sensor and it, and it's the same way on the other side, it butts right up to the fuel cell. And that is not gonna work. I won't be able to plug in with all of this happening right here. So I need to look at that. And that's on the other side. This is not a major deal, but this, uh, this is the oil dipstick. I doubt I can get it out here, plus it looks a little dorky. So I'm probably going to change this bracket and make this turn and come more up this way so that it's a little bit more usable. Now down here, this bolt right here is, uh, it's that bolt on the starter. It's just like this one and they've got this little groove in the starter housing and you can't just back that bolt off. You have to actually take both of these bolts off at the same time and slide the starter back and you can only get a combination wrench on it. You can't get a ratchet on there. Well, because of that, accessing this bolt for me is almost impossible. On this side over here, you can see, this is the camshaft position indicator. You can see that a little bit better. It's there's, there's room behind there, like I can get my finger behind it, but there's not going to be room for a plug back there. And if there was, that would, be a, that would be a bad location for a plug. So I don't know what's going to happen with this fuel cell. I don't know up here. My plan was to put the radiator somewhere over here. Because of the, the access issues I'm having back here, now possibly I'll consider moving the fuel cell forward and putting a radiator back here or, or something. I need, to, I need to think about that because I'm almost, I'm almost feeling like in order to have good access to the motor, I need to be able to access it down here. If I did do that, if I moved this forward and I could position that radiator so that it was up off the floor a little bit, I could possibly remove the aluminum paneling on the bottom here, probably leave it out and use that for the radiator to uh, get rid of some of its hot air. And then I would have access to that bolt from the top, which would help. And then that would open up those two camshaft position ports or plugs. And then that would also allow me better access to the last coil pack and, uh, and just the back of the motor. So I have to consider a couple of things like that. And just like I suspected, the, uh, the oil fill cap will not fit. It's close, but you can't get it in there. So I'll either cap that off and relocate it back here or possibly see if I can make any modifications to the cap so that I can get it in there. So that's it for this video, guys. We got the motor in there. That was our intention. It showed us that some things worked very well. It showed us that some things are probably gonna have to be redesigned and moved around a little bit. And then we're gonna have to look into the oil return issue. But all in all, I think it went pretty well. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I see you in the next video. Take care.